when a ray of light arrives on the surface of a transparent material, like water or glass, the beam of light splits in two. Some of the light is reflected, and some of the light passes through the material. It is refracted. Why does light do that? Why does light reflect and refract? Both classical physics and quantum physics can provide answers. In this video, we will consider light as a wave, which means that we will take a classical approach. OK, but light is a wave of what exactly? Light is just an electric field that is propagating and for which the strength is oscillating. Therefore, it makes a wave. There is also a magnetic component to light. This is why we say that light is an electromagnetic wave. But we do not need to consider the magnetic component in this video. If you want more info about this and about what is an electromagnetic wave or what is light, you should check this video. An electric charge creates an electric field around it. If you place another electric charge within that field, that charge will be subjected to a force. Light is an oscillating electric field. So if you place an electric charge on the path of the ray of light, that charge will experience an oscillating force. In other words, that charge starts oscillating too. And because it is an electric charge, it creates its own electric field that will be oscillating also at the same frequency as the incident light. Charges on the path of the incident light will re-emit some of that light in all directions. OK, so now that you know this, let's consider a ray of light that hits a material with a uniform surface, like a glass window or the surface of a calm lake. The ray of light hits that surface with an angle to the normal that we can call the incident angle theta. The material obviously is made of atoms, and atoms contain electrons. Electrons carry an electric charge. So when the light touches the surface, the electrons will start oscillating and therefore emit some light in all directions, which has the same frequency as the incident light. The part of this emitted light that is going backwards compared to the incident ray is the reflection. It's the reflected light. I just find this amazing. When you look in a window and you see some reflection, that's what's going on. You are seeing the light emitted by electrons from the glass that started to oscillate as a reaction of receiving the incident light. And by oscillating, they created their own oscillating electric field, therefore emitting their own electromagnetic wave, and that is what reflection is. The light goes backwards, but in all backward directions. So all these re-emitted rays interfere with each other. Most of these waves cancel out by destructive interference, except in one direction, where the interference is constructive. The ray of light that survives this destructive massacre is the one that forms an angle with the normal identical to the incident angle. That surviving ray of light also needs to be in a plane formed by the incident ray of light and the normal at the point of contact of the light with the surface. That's where the two laws of reflection come from. What about the fraction of the remitted light that goes forwards? You know, inside the material. The oscillating electric fields formed by the oscillating electrons will just add up to the electric field of the incident ray of light. The thing to realize is that the EM wave emitted by the electrons come with a phase difference compared to the incident EM wave, the incident light. That fact is at the heart of refraction and definitely deserves its own video. So stay tuned. You enjoyed this video? Like, subscribe and smash this notification bell. It really encourages me to produce new videos. In the meantime, I wish you the best and I'll see you soon in the next episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao.